Hello, I'm Scott Thompson and welcome to After 10. President Park Geun Hye has embarked on a week-long trip that will take her to Indonesia and Brunei for a marathon of multilateral forums and bilateral talks where she will engage in sales diplomacy and promote her creative economy. Today on the show, we discuss the outlook for the president's Southeast Asia trip. President Park Geun Hye left on October 6 for a trip dedicated to multilateral diplomacy in the Asia Pacific region. After participating in the APEC Bali 2013 summit, President Park will attend the 16th Korea ASEAN summit and the ASEAN Plus 3 summit. As part of an effort to revive the Korean economy, President Park Geun Hye will boost her sales diplomacy by attending the APEC and the ASEAN summit meetings and by making a state visit to Indonesia. Mr. Ha, Mr. Jung, thank you both very much for being on the show. Thank you for inviting thank me. Thank you. Now, this is President Park's fourth official trip overseas since she took office. Uh, she's going to carry out what she calls sales diplomacy with the leaders of other key countries. What is your outlook for the president's trip? Mr. Ha, we'll start with uh, you. The economic activation and credit jobs for the foreign sales is uh, the, the second case. Mr. Jung? Okay, as you pointed out, this is President Park's fourth overseas trip and the second participation in the multilateral summit. When G20 is a debut on the international summit meeting, uh, well, participation in EAS and ASEAN and ASEAN Plus 3 can be regarded as a debut to regional bloc summit meeting. So participation to G20 was a chance for her to improve relationships with actors of the world who are influential in deciding the rules of world economy and participation in East Asian EAS and ASEAN and ASEAN Plus 3 can be a mm -hmm. chance for her to improve relationships with world leaders and to find a chance of implementing the so-called creative economy abroad. Well, unfortunately, the situation of domestic politics and the uh, difficult economic condition well, make her feel a lot of burden and uh, maybe she is pressed to deliver a certain kind of mm -hmm. concrete result mm -hmm. from this trip. I hope that President Park can take this good chance, take advantage of this good chance and to bring a concrete result mm -hmm. and fruitful results to Korea. Now, Mr. Ha, President mm -hmm. Park delivered a, a keynote speech at a meeting of Pacific Rim business leaders mm -hmm. known as the APEC mm -hmm. CEO Summit before attending that main yeah. APEC Summit. Uh, what message was she trying to deliver in that particular speech? Yes, the, the first the Asia Pacific region, the world the, the engine of economic growth, uh, the topic of the our trading system to strengthen the role of APEC. As you know, the APEC is made of the Korean and Australia, 1989. Uh, now there is a 21 country. The second is APEC is connective vision. The last is the sustainable growth. Now, the president's speech at the APEC CEO summit was uh, really her second keynote speech since the G20 summit uh, speech that she gave last month. Her uh, status, her appearance on the international stage has really been watched with a lot of keen interest. Why do you think that is? Well, actually, the status of Korea in the world society is mm. much higher than we usually expect. Korea is the only country which became donor country from a recipient country in ODA structure. And Korea is the only country who reached that, well, per capita income of $20,000 without the experience of having colonies. And uh, Korea's image is like a peace-loving and sophisticated country nowadays. And uh, furthermore, Hallyu makes the image of Korea a lot higher than that of 20 years ago. Well, mm -hmm. so in a sense, literally, Korea is a kind of shining star in the world society. This, this, the, this remark does not come from a kind of ethnocentric pride, but uh, it is general evaluation on Korea in the world, world society nowadays. So, well, against this backdrop, the speech of Korean presidents can, well, take a lot of attention from other countries. And furthermore, <coughs> Korea, Korean government has expressed openly that it wants to take the role of, well, mediator and sometimes arbiter between emerging countries, emerging economics and uh, leading powers. Mm -hmm. So, well, 
maybe the other countries wants to look at what Korea wants to deliver and what kind of role that they can take. So that's why the President Park's keynote speech and other speeches can draw a lot of attention from others. The 21st APEC Summit itself, it's going to be held under the theme Resilient Asia Pacific Agenda, or Engine rather, of Global Growth. Mm. Uh, Mr. Ha, what is at the top of the agenda for Korea uh, at that particular summit down there? Okay, to promote the uh, creation of our country's economic strategy, and to the recovery of the world economy, and to produce to the grow and uh, be able to strengthen to cooperation is uh, expected. In, yeah. in terms of building cooperation That's with the right, other APEC build, countries, right, exactly. especially in this time of economic yeah. uncertainty. Yeah, they right. exactly. Yeah. Now, President Park has already spoken up about uh, Korea's decision on joining the Trans-Pacific Partnership. She said that that decision was being put off for the time being. Uh, what do you make of that decision from the president and that announcement? When it comes to the participation in TPP, the Korea's dilemma is the possible collision with RCEP. <clears throat> RCEP is the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, which is led by China. Well, TPP is the thing that Korea cannot give up despite <coughs> it is of little interest. Well, the main reason why Korea doesn't want to be excluded from TPP is the participation of Japan to TPP. Mm -hmm. Well, so, well, the industrial structure of Japan and Korea has a lot of resemblance. So, if Korea failed to join TPP, it means that Korea might lose the chance of competing with Japan in the international world market. So, but, and Korea's concern is that uh, Korea's joining TPP may bring the result of the isolation of China. And this kind of situation as a kind of result of well, power struggle over the regional integration, and the United States does not want to lose its leadership by focusing on Pacific, and the China, well, wants to increase its influence over the region by focusing, uh, by emphasizing the Asia. So, well, mm. before <clears throat> Japan's participation to TPP, the Korea's attitude toward the joining TPP was uh, more than like uh, hesitation, but well, the, so the possible way of evading this dilemma is to, well, fasten the process of FTAAP, which can, well, include mm. the Asian, <clears throat> Asian countries and Pacific countries at the same time. And as we already discussed, the Korea wants to take the role of arbiter between emerging countries and, uh, well, uh, leading powers. So this can be a good chance for Korea to implement and take the role of arbiter by by taking the initiatives at the well, birth of FTA AP. Well, that's my answer. President Park and Hay put off this decision uh, right now. It's a decision that she's going to have to make eventually, obviously. How long a process are we talking about? How long can she realistically delay this decision on joining the TPP? So it's not easy to answer the mm. how long we can delay the decision <laughs> regarding the TPP. Mm. But uh, the schedule is destined that uh, they want to conclude the procedure by 2015. And when it comes to TPP, well, 2013 is their destined well period. So, well, within a few months, we have to decide whether to join TPP or not. So fortunately, the absence of Barack Obama <laughs> of this time <clears throat> can make President Park delay the decision regarding TPP. But as I told you, so the only possible way of evading this kind of dilemma is to propose another agenda that can be shared by, well, the shareholders. A country watching that decision with very keen interest is China. A Korea-China summit did take place this afternoon. Uh, Mr. Jung, what were you looking for from that particular summit? This is already maybe fourth or fifth times that President Park and uh, President Xi Jinping met this time. So, well, they have discussed a lot before. And, uh, well, this can be a good chance for them to, well, deepen the agenda that they shared. Mm -hmm. And maybe TPP thing and uh, other things were dealt between themselves. So, well, President Park wants to, well, deepen the trust between China and Korea. And as you know, the current situation of Northeast Asia is quite unstable. And because of the, well, Japan's attitude and the, well, 
the United States attitude towards Japan's decision to, well, uh, re get back the well, right of collective security. So maybe this kind of agenda can be dealt between President Xi Jinping and President Park. Uh, after the APEC summit, President Park will take part in the 16th Korea ASEAN summit. It's the first mm -hmm. Korea ASEAN summit uh, since the president took office. What do you think the president is mainly going to focus on with the leaders of the 10 ASEAN countries mm -hmm. during that summit? Korea ASEAN summit is a very special chance for Korea to deliver its will of cooperation with ASEAN countries. Mm -hmm. And this is a very peculiar, well, chance for mm -hmm. Korea. And as the interest of big powers in East Asian countries rapidly grow, rapidly growing, well, the first aim of Korea is to, well, secure a kind of strategic mm -hmm. activity space, space within the region. And uh, it is expected that President Bach will propose the methods of improving cooperation with ASEAN countries and Korea. And this can be categorized into three sectors. Well, uh, political security one, and uh, uh, economic sector, and the social cultural sectors. But as a lot of agenda will be dealt again at next day's well, ASEAN Plus 3 meeting, so mm -hmm. the pa President Bach should try to differentiate the Korea's role at the meeting with ASEAN countries before entering into ASEAN Plus Three, so that is mm. that should be the first aim of President Ba. One summit that will not take place at the ASEAN Plus Three will be a Korea-China-Japan mm. summit. Yes. Mr. Jung, why is that? Well, actually, well, it's been several times that Korea and the ASEAN countries have well unilateral meetings like this, mm. and so well, this can be interpreted as. Korea emphasized ASEAN countries so much. And uh, well, so this kind of well, peculiar meeting can make her to, well, uh, how can I put it, broaden the space for us to take a kind of strategic activity space within the region. I mentioned at the top there was a, a marathon of multilateral forums. Yet another forum that President Park will be attending is the East Asia Summit, the eighth one. Uh, she's going to discuss there with other leaders ways to bolster mm -hmm. regional cooperation in East Asia, mm -hmm. along with a number of other matters as well. Uh, Mr. Ha, what do you think is going to be the emphasis of those talks at the East Asia Summit? It's uh, nowadays globally with uh, issues uh, such as the food and energy security, climate change, and the decision, like, yeah, and so on. Right. <laughs> yeah. The president is... Uh, uh, discover and the suggestion, good idea nowadays in ASEAN, EAS, uh, ASEAN Plus 3, is, uh, as you know, the four multiple the, the summit, right? And uh, the Indonesia and Brunei, right? Anyway, the our president is uh, suggestion, good idea, uh, such as uh, a creative economy <laughs> like this. It's a uh, uh, solve the uh, global issue. Mr. Jung, what do you think is, is going to be the main topic of discussion at the East Asia Summit? Well, East Asia Summit, when it comes to East Asia Summit, well, there can be a lot of, well, uh, agendas can be dealt with. And, uh, well, but, uh, well, as I told you, the, the most of the agendas will be, uh, will be shared by the agendas at, uh, well, ASEAN countries. So, well, they can be categorized into, well, political, political security ones and, uh, well, economic ones and uh, social culture ones. Mm -hmm. And other agendas like, well, uh, deregulation and the uh, climate change and uh, energy security and food security can be the agenda, agendas they can be dealt with. Korea, of course putting a lot of emphasis on the U.S. Mm. and China in terms of economic relations. Right. A lot of attention now also being turned to the ASEAN mm. countries as well. Why should and why is Korea paying so much attention to the ASEAN nations right now? Last year, the amount of trade is $131 billion. As the exports minus import, that is we had approximately $27 billion. As I told you, oh, second of the, the uh, our country partnership, trade partnership, is uh, that means the consumer is uh, uh, population, right? Indonesia, like this, uh, of all parts of the population in the world, is uh, oh, that means we have a good uh, consumer. 
in, in Asia. Indonesia certainly has emerged as a, uh, a key trading partner mm. in recent years. Uh, President Park is going to join the Korea Indonesia Business Investment Forum mm. as well during her trip there. Uh, tell us a little bit about Indonesia's rise uh, in terms of economic, uh, mm. economic cooperation mm. with Korea and in terms of regional cooperation as well. Mr. Jung, let's start with you. Okay, there can be several reasons, but let me just mm. point out three. Number one is the uh, interest that Indonesia itself has. Indonesia, Indonesia is a very important actor in East Asia and also the member country of G20. And its population is almost 240 million, and the territory of Indonesia is nine times bigger than that of the whole Korean Peninsula. And at the same time, uh, the well renowned World Economic Institutes have expressed the opinion that Indonesia will be ranked at the seventh largest economy by 2030. Well, and this kind of strong economic development can be possible based on the strong domestic market, well, uh, composed of young population. And so many, well, number two is that Korea's, Korea's interest meet with Indonesia's demands. So that is to say the Korea and Indonesia have mutual interest. When it comes to infrastructure market of Indonesia, well, it is governed by China. And when it comes to automobile market of Indonesia, 90, 70% of the market is well occupied by Japan. Mm -hmm. So Indonesian government does not want any specific country to monopolize its industry mm -hmm. and economy. So Korea's participation can be welcomed by Indonesian government. And Indonesian government have expressed that well, they want to improve relationship with Korea, especially at the field of creative economy. And so, and another thing is that the third thing is that the special personal relationship with President Park and Indonesian political leader group. Well, the first lady, Ani Yudhoyono, well, mm. spent two years in 1970s when her father works for the first ambassador to Korea, Indonesian ambassador to Korea. And the President Park, when she took the role of a first lady at Chongade, she met the mother of incumbent first lady at Chongade. So, well, when Korean minister of a foreign Korean Minister of Foreign Affairs Yun byung se visited Indonesia last, ju last June. Mm -hmm. He used the terminology that golden age to define the relationship between Indonesia and Korea of nowadays. Presidents go overseas for trips like this. Mm -hmm. They generally like to come back with an accomplishment, an achievement, something to mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. sort of uh, tout, of mm -hmm. course, to the domestic audience. Mm -hmm. uh, what sort of a accomplishment or achievement uh, do you expect to see out of President Park's trip overseas this time? I think that this can be a good chance for Korea mm. to solidify and broaden the well, mm. status as an arbiter between mm. emerging countries and mm. uh, leading powers. And Korean government, as, I, as we already discussed, has mm. openly expressed that they want to take the role of arbiter between emerging countries and uh, well, global leaders. So. Uh, uh, if President Park uh, can work successfully this time, well, we will come one step closer to that goal. Well, if I may add something to the prospect of this kind, well, so I can take the concept of a winning coalition. Well, to make it simple, winning coalition and the Lord of Pivotal, well, middle power country, is that, well, in a multilateralized global society, even a small country can take the decisive role depending on the power distribution of the time. So Korea can take the role of arbiter between big countries and, and small countries and even between big countries because Korea take the role of well, the winning coalition. If we well, add our power to the existing powers, they can be the winner of the situation. So middle power diplomacy based on cultural diplomacy and uh, public diplomacy can be national brand image of Korea. And the uh, Korean government wants to take that role as the national brand of Korea. So, and I hope that this can be well achieved through President Park's trip to abroad this time. We're of course getting a little bit ahead of ourselves because the trip has literally just begun. Uh -huh. um, for the remainder of this mm. trip, and I'll start with you, Mr. Jung, yeah. for the remainder of this trip, what uh, would you like to see the president put emphasis on uh, during all of these forums, all of these summits that she's going to be going through? So Korean diplomacy should be aimed to get, well, should be aimed to mm. gain trust from others. Well, we, Korean diplomacy should be oriented to gaining other people's hearts. 
Well, uh, uh, we should not expect that our counterpart will see just what we want to show them. Right, so national brand image is a quite relative thing. If we want to deliver something to them, them but they did not want to see that, we, that what we want to deliver. So, well, uh, showing respect to other cultures and being friendly and fair and revealing the attitude of peace-loving can be a good way of improving the image of Korea abroad. And I think that President Park is well aware of this. And we should remember that economic interest can be achieved after getting trust. Diplomacy is a long way of getting trust from others, and President Park already emphasized the data thing quite frequently, and she is well aware of it. And I hope that the, I expect President Park's overseas trip to this time will, will be quite successful. Yeah. And success in this case looks like building up that cooperation and, and strengthening relations, it sounds like. Well, uh, other than that, well, the, well, by improving the relationship with others, we can build the trust between Korea and, well, other countries. Taking that first step. Yes. She will be putting an emphasis on sales diplomacy. We've talked mm -hmm. about it before uh, in yes. this show. Yeah. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what you think sales diplomacy is and how it really differs from past presidents. I mean, presidents go overseas, of course, they want to build economic relationships. That's part of their job. How is this situation maybe different from, from past presidents? Well, in a sense, sales diplomacy is the terminology that, that are shared by Korean journals, Korean, uh, Korean journalism. But uh, I don't think that this kind of sales diplomacy is overtly expressed at overseas. Even though our intention is to make a lot of benefits through sales diplomacy, but the first step of diplomacy is to, well, improve relationships and uh, gaining trust from others. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you want to sell something to others, the first step is to gain its heart. Mr. Ha, mm -hmm. Mr. Jung, thank you both very much for being on the show and sharing your insights. We do appreciate it. Thank you for, thank thank you for, you for having much. me on. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time after 10.